Hey, aloha. Welcome to Office Hours Korean Natural Farming, sponsored by the Pure Canna Foundation, here for May 7th, 2023. Um, checking in with you guys from all over the world. Thanks for tuning in. Um, appreciate, you know, spreading the Korean natural farming here and around the world. And yeah, all right. <laughs> so before we get into things, um, Seek some higher wisdom. It's always a good place to start with everything. You may hear my hard drive in the background. I just just got a second hard drive, so I'm mirroring a RAID. About 12 terabytes of data passing through, going from one place to another. So um, that's that great sound keeping you, keeping you company. I'm not sure how well that's coming through. I can hear it pretty good on my headphones. So, um, But let's start here. And today is return which is a time of darkness, comes to a close. Receiving this hexagram is a sign that you have reached a turning point. This moment is akin to the winter solstice. The greatest adversity is past, and the light is beginning to return. Nonetheless, one cannot force the completion of a change, and it is wise to rest. Act only when you can move gently and innocently, and all will be well. Fu, which is also comes to remind, as a reminder to return to the light in yourself. Growth is only possible when we relinquish the expressions of the ego, which are pride, impatience, anger, and desire. To act forcefully or ambitiously now will only generate misfortune. Let things develop naturally in their own way. Simply observe and accept the changes as you observe and accept the rising of the sun. Allow yourself time to rest and to gather strength for a time of growth ahead. By holding to modesty, gentleness, and correct conduct, you prepare the ground for a fruitful blossoming when the light fully returns. Awesome. Yeah, returning. Um, I just returned back to the Big Island. I uh, was on, well, I say just, I, I was actually got back last Sunday, which is why I didn't do office hours last week. Um, usually I try to make it every week, but it was just too logistically challenging. Yesterday, uh, last week I was on Maui um, teaching the um, farm apprentice mentorship program over there um, and working with um, the Hawaii Farmers Union United and uh, Sarah and her great um, great program called the farm apprentice mentorship it's she's been the farm co um, the fam coordinator for many years or two years actually now th two or three years um and um yeah so she's been doing a great program so i got to go over to maui college uh last thursday and teach there um about 30 30 folks in the program or or were there and taught for three hours i thought i thought i would go over the natural farming things in like a few you know like an hour and a half and then like leave questions open but i ended up spending three hours talking about the nine core solutions natural farming how it fits in the big picture how all of this like melds together and literally without a break um like talked for three hours explaining these things making jokes you know just uh you know, I, I kind of fancy myself as an ed edutainer of sorts, like where, you know, like you can you can educate, but you also got to make it entertaining, right? So, um, try my best to convey, you know, what is the essence of Korean natural farming? What are the, um, you know, the nine core solutions? How is that all fitting together? How do you put those into the prescriptions? How do you put this in? If you were brand new, because I asked the audience, I'm like, who's familiar with Korean natural farming and two or three people raise their hand and i was just like whoa okay so um start with the basics you know make it uh make it simple um try not to lose people because it's a huge topic right 
Korean natural farming, you start to get into it and you find it's almost like one of those grand unifying theories, right? It takes, you know, chemistry, biology, physics, um, spirituality, um, what else? Um, metaphysics, um, you know, raising a good family, integrating animals, um, learning life cycles of plants, learning how, um, you know, nature really works. All those things, like more, right? And there's way more complexity to natural farming, and it brings all that together. And, um, you know, so I'm trying to convey that in like, you know, two, three hours, you know, or, you know, and to, to folks, and they, they loved it. They, they were really great. Um, and then the next Friday, so I did that Thursday night, then Friday, I got to go um, up to the farm that we we're going to work at the next day and basically had a great like private consultation with these folks. Um, Kanoa, the farmer, Dan Rudoy, who's, who went to Master Cho's 2011 teacher training in Big Island, um, and Sarah and and met their you know their farm folks up there and, and did a private consult and it was amazing because they're primarily growing a lot of carrots and um and then they have these different things where they're trying like traditional high tillage um more um i don't know more regenerative and then like full regenerative where they're actually letting like you know a full ground cover and not trying to till it and trying to like actually bring the soil to life and it was interesting to walk through and to see the different um differences between them and then to see the different bugs and the things that were attacking things and what wasn't and um you know they were suffering from a fair amount of um, bacterial wilt on their kales and i recommended to them hey you know um you know like in addition to like just applying the basics of natural farming and taking the basic um prescriptions of the formulations i was like hey you know you could really this this kale here particularly could really benefit from um vinegar lactic acid bacteria the, the vinegar because it would it would increase the waxiness and then then get rid of the um the the sites where this bacteria could get into the kale stems you know they had kind of brown discoloration on them the um, lactic acid bacteria because that would then be the protectors holding down the leaves and really you know fighting off that bacteria and just like you know protecting the place and then also some calciums which would help to harden it up and and i also recommended the calciums because they had a lot of um cabbage moths flying around and cabbage moth is a leaf sucker leaf eater in, in its um you know it's it's larval stage uh, like little caterpillars going to be eating your leaves so if you're able to harden off your um your um leafy greens with calcium that way you would be able to uh, prevent this bug the caterpillar from having an available food source and eating that and munching around and um doing its thing and then um yeah, so, and, and basically the main solution, the main input they were putting onto their plants was um, sea minerals. So they were using a lot of, I, I think they're actually buying like C90 or something. I didn't I didn't ask specifically, but um, Dan said they were primarily using a lot of sea minerals as their main fertility source. And, um, you know, I asked if they were doing any IMOs or anything, and they, they weren't really, um, they were doing, um, you know, yeah so but but good good regenerative practices that i saw but um just you know incorporating in the korean natural farming and i was like look you guys got a gator here if you get a little sprayer where um you know like my maruyama type thing where it's a power sprayer it's not you know because i asked them what sprayers they had and they said they have some backpack sprayers where you walk around like with a backpack sprayer and like and they even had a battery operated one so you don't have to pump it but i was like you know you got it like if you got you invested you know 500 bucks and you get a decent sprayer where you're able to drive on this gator put a you know 25 gallon um uh, tank in the back and spray you'll be able to cover your entire farm area from starting you know start mixing the solutions into the tank drive spray everything and then clean up in less than an hour and for their situation where they were growing like kales and um, lettuce for um, for restaurants where they kind of make this salad mix, if they were able to um, spray that twice a week, um, they would they would just kick butt like everything. I, I I believe. I mean, this is this is my like my my like 
ideal like you know supposition of like i think that if they did that twice a week and they spray the gator and it took two hours a week to do this which is not much time then their their whole production everything would go up they wouldn't have the pest problems they wouldn't have the um the bacterial problems and i mean this is just like my mind like like envisioning this you know it'd be actually it's interesting to see when the rubber meets the road and what it is you know but if they provide those solutions they start practicing the natural farming and spraying i think it would just um totally turn their operation around they would have bigger better more marketable produce and um and have all that happening for them so um so i love i love going to places i love seeing farms i love doing that and then the following day saturday um the class the whole 30 30 or so folks came up and even more um 35 maybe folks came over from molokai and lanai and we all met on maui out on the lahaina side up on the farm and um I taught them basically in three hours again. I, we started with the um, fermented plant juice, making can of food because, uh, you know, the can of food where you ferment the plants. And we chose um, banana flowers, um, hono hono grass, because they had a lot of that um, growing. And then also this like thing they called potato weed. I don't know. But those were just the common things that were thriving there. And we wanted, you know, so. Um, and the banana flower I wanted to do because I knew it was going to render the most juice. And we harvested it at the most unideal time. We harvested it at high noon. So they didn't get that much juice right away just because the plants suck all that down into their root system when that's happening. Um, and so, um, so you know, but, but we went over that and basically for about two and a half hours, um, we did plant juice and I got everyone engaged and got them to teach each other and I got to explain you know a little bit more of natural farming how it goes the importance of farming and what we need to do um and then how to um you know bring um and, and then in the last 30 minutes I taught them how to make extremely cheap microbes the, the dis disgustingly cheap microbes so some some people will call it jadam microbe solution but basically you're just putting starch and salt and microbe dirt and water and I, and I had a batch that we made the prior day. And then I had the people that made it the prior day teach them how to do it. So a lot of teaching opportunities because the way to really um, remember things is if you teach, you remember like 90% of everything you learn. So I try to get, you know, when I'm teaching, I try to get the other people to teach. I, I'll teach them a little bit and then I'll say, okay, now you teach this to the other part of the group. Um, and that, that really helps to, to get it together. So um so that was that was a ton of fun to be over there and yeah maui and lahaina luna what's up rainbow possum for being down there and doing it um and the, the video is buffering it says it's excellent connection here so um i haven't lost any frames on my end so it's buffering for you um i am doing a bunch of stuff on my network but i've only dropped like 1.1 percent of frames 96 out of 11,000 something so far so it's not buffering on my end it should be just fine um so um um yeah so so um so i did that you know maui was great um good to go over there um and then you know i i definitely need to go over there and do a more in-depth class um, and also, I'm getting my classes together. I'll be doing one, um, I think, November and then January here. So if you're interested, um, I'll, I'll be putting that up soon. Look forward to the next announcement, office hours, or you can check canffarm.com, but it's not up yet now, so don't don't try to register right this moment. Um, but but that um, and good good to see all you guys. You know, here in the chat today, we got uh, Rainbow Possum Farm. What's up? Um, we got Cecily in Western Australia, the Goof Man up in New York, New Zealand, Willie, how's it, brother? Um, Aroha. <laughs> Good day. Um, and uh, Printer Bear just collected some FPJ this morning. Awesome. Yeah, right after the full moon, it's the perfect time. Um, the, those are called the Lao days, um, where you gather medicine. Perfect time in the morning. Awesome. In Connecticut. That's awesome, man. What what I don't what I'm curious what material you use, but I think maybe you said kudzu vine here, which is a perfect one. Um, kudzu is a really good plant, um, or maybe that's crab grows. It's talking about the kudzu here. Um, yeah, um, 
Yeah, Guzu is one of the things that Master Cho actually recommends. If you remember, we went over, we're going over his presentation at the end of each of these office hours, and he talked about Kudzu. They called it Chocolate Vine, um, but it was Kudzu that he was talking about. So that's awesome. Um, Kia ora. Yeah, life, life of heaven to you too, man. Kia ora. Um, so um so what else um and then this week also i talked um the goof man he's 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 on it um and he was he emailed me a little bit about um the differences in the um app versus the guides and all these things and um we kind of had a little interesting chat here so i'm gonna share that with you guys oh, what's up czech republic first time yeah um um if you got slugs um you you got you're encouraging a lot of bacteria to happen um so slugs um uh the key is just to get more imos out there and eliminate get more fungus in there those will then mitigate your slugs there's also um you know chemical control methods to do uh, and also seawater and salts so um so anyway, I, I was chatting with um, um, Goofman here. He emailed me about the app. So I'm just going to show and share a little bit of these emails with you guys here. Let's see. Get the right thing over here with that. Due to this. There we go. Um, so he emailed me to say he was going over the app. You know, he's making a thing and he was double checking it. And here's my app here. And he highlighted the differences here on the app versus this guide in the book right and there's some differences um you know i apologize for any mistakes that i've introduced or anything like that um but he was pointing out that there was differences here and so differences here right kind of interesting and so what i sent to him was actually like you know the thing that i have for master cho right so this is when i went to master cho's um nutrient cycle uh, advanced training this was the guide and document he gave to us okay so here it is um yeah um and i don't know if you can read it it's a little bit you know it's hard to read a little bit here zoom in a bit here make it a little bit bigger um but basically these and, and i'm just like it's all in korean but i'm translating here like you know ohn 1 to 1000 this is his type 4 seed um it's, it's uh, seed formula and you know there's a lot of there's a lot lost in translation and trying to translate it across but you know you get the basic idea here of like this is what master chose formulas are so like you know like this would be your your vegetative um chubby formula this would be your chain crossover um flower formula this would be your maturing oh you know what i gotta turn on my mouse thing make it better where is it it's not up there Brr, it went away I used to have this nice thing to turn on the mouse. Well, anyway, hopefully you can see my mouse. Um, and type three, you know, um, uh, fruiting formula. But this is actually like a cute. Uh, anyway, you know, the, the lost in translation and the ripening formula. So soil seed, uh, you know, all, all these correspond across. But there's, it's hard to translate this stuff because it's not even. Um, anyway. So this is the ultimate like source of truth that I have um, of what Master Cho gave to us. And then um, he was nice enough to um, go through and then he looked at this and then sent me back this email here where um, he went through and, you know, um, you know, he's talking about natural mineral A through D, which are proprietary um uh, mineral formulas that Master Cho has that aren't uh, open source or readily available, um, and they're not they're not rock dust blends. They're actually like liquids. Um, but he uses some type of machine to make these things. And when he talks about it, he always cites the biblical ver verse where um, where Moses is in the desert and he strikes the rock and makes water come out of it. And that's what he always cites when he talks about these things here. Um, for the natural minerals, somehow he's able to get it. My, my, my theory is that you make the, the male and the female rocks make love, and then they, the love juice goes into the water. I don't know exactly how it works. Maybe you strike them a bit. I don't know. 
I, I'm not sure how he does this. Some people claim to know, but I don't think they really know what he's doing. Um, and you can also run it through a um, a BMW type thing, which I covered, you know, in past office hours. So, you you know, you can look those up as well. Um, and so he's talking about, you know, the plant juice, these other things. But then he highlighted these differences here, which I'm not exactly sure. He, he is in the chat, so maybe he can clarify this. But, you know, here's com um, compared to nature's cycle chart. Um, which I'm not sure which the nature cycle chart. Maybe maybe that was the original Master Cho um, book or the the document I sent him was was that. Um, so these look like these are um, you know these two are subtracted out and then these are added in here where it actually uh, adds in some reproduction here and some. Um, some cleanser here and changes the plant juice from one to 500 to one to a thousand so i think that's what he's talking about yeah so so nature's cycle chart is the og one he's saying so the the document i sent to him of uh, master cho's document all in korean so he's saying that these are subtracted out and then these are added in compared to compared to my chart here right then comparing to cho's book which i think is um um, which one is Cho's book? Oh, the the second book that um that he got from Master Cho, uh, and I sent him a book um on this. So com comparing to Cho Master Cho's book, it's then adding in you know fuel here and um, there, and adding or adding in reproduction there when the seed treatment, and then reproduction or excuse me minerals here, and then it's subtracting out these um up from the recipe right so that's um that's master cho's book which is an older book and then again cho's cycle chart i don't know which one is the cho's cycle chart here um but then on this one it's it's adding in uh fuel and um protectors to to these two recipes and it's subtracting out these so even in master cho's um own literature it looks to me like there's inconsistencies there as well. Um, and so it, this is kind of an interesting thing. Like what is the, the pure source of truth? What is, what is, um, you know, what is the best, um, um, you know, um, you know, like, am I doing, you know, perfect KNF, pure KNF? Am I following the formulas to the T? Am I doing this? And that's why when I, when I go to teach natural farming, I say that, Look, these here, these are guidelines. Because even in Master Cho's own literature, there's changes between them. Like over time, over whatever, over translation, over these things. Basically, what I'm trying to get at is that these are a guideline, right? So if you're coming across, you're making the maintenance, you're including food, cleanser, medicine, and structure. Because those are Maslow's rules, right? You need, you need to eat, you need to be clean and clean up the waste, you need to, you know, crap. You need to be healthy, so you need medicine. You need a roof over your head. You need structure. And so I bring it down to like this philosophical, like a sixth grader can understand of like understanding these concepts and then being like, look, ultimately you're the master of this, right? Like these are suggestions. These are guidelines. These are things that get you like on the right track. But then just like I was talking just a bit ago when I was consulting with um, that farm, I'm saying, you know, you really need vinegar, uh, the protectors, you know, cleanser protectors and um, and reproduction on these, right? And it's because I understand fundamentally how these solutions work and what they do in their individuality. But then I also understand that, you know, in certain combinations, they work synergistically with each other and they can cause even better things to happen. Like, for instance, if you're using minerals, you get even more absorption if you're including some reproduction here. So the water soluble calcium, because the calcium moves the things through the plant. It's the transporter. It's like, you know, reproduction is one name for it, but it's also the transporter. You know, I could call it KNF transport, transportation, you know, because it, it moves minerals through and, and it moves things to where you need them. Right. And so even in my own translation of trying to take these things, I'm trying to like pin it down to one word. Right. But conceptually, if you know what the individual solutions do, you'll understand how these formulations work. And um, and it's really 
um, you know, there's differences in it. There's there's a lot of differences in how these things are used and what they're used and what you're formulating for. And even look, if you look at Master Cho, he's not necessarily that consistent through this. And so it's hard to know like what, you know, what's really going on. But that's why I teach, like when I teach natural farming, you come here, I get this like depth of understanding to people. And I'm like, you got to understand them in their individuality, then you got to understand them together, and then you got to understand how all this fits, and then what, what, what's the point and the purpose, because then you can customize your own methods. And I think one other thing that's worth sharing here, and, and thanks, Goofman, this is freaking awesome. This is like so cool that you, you dive deep and that you try to understand this, um, because... Um, and, and, and yeah, to like really understand what the heck's going on, you know, like when things are sick, reduce the food, you know, if you have a deep understanding of what the things mean, um, it's, it's like, it's even better. But I, I want to share one other, um, one other thing that I got going on here. Let me see where the heck did it go? Cause I just pulled it up here of, yeah, here. So let me, let me see if I can rip this tab over here. I can. Okay. Hang on. Then I'm going to shrink it down here and get rid of that and bring this over here a little bit, right like that. And let me show you this. I'll bring this back on the screen. So this here, this is my document folder here, which I, which I also share with, um, with my students when they come here, because I don't necessarily give all this stuff away of just like, you know, you gotta gotta get, be ready for it and like learn and get into it. But these here, when I went to Master Cho's nutrient cycle um, advanced theory stuff, he's including all these documents. Which, like for instance, this here is um, I believe how to do a pear and an apple. So this is like some orchard type of growing here. Of when you're doing an orchard, and you're doing a pear and an apple. Like those are just the examples he picked, but this would be, you know, fruit trees like, like a lychee or, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't know what pear and apples probably pretty um, ubiquitous around the world. Um, you know, mango trees, uh, lychees, longan, you know, um, whatever fruiting, avocados, whatever fruit tree you have, this is pretty much your guide for this. And it's understanding like, you know, here, here in Hawaii, we don't have the same seasons, but here it's like January, February, March, April, like the timeline going across all the way to December. So you get a full year out of this of what you're looking at. And then you understand like here, January, February, I don't, I don't even know what that says there. I think I, I got to actually look at my original documents. This thing's kind of blurry even for me, um, but it's coming in. Then the thing is starting to flower. You're getting growth here, your first part of the year. Um, you know, and the thing is super, it's active from here to there. And then it starts flowering right about here, right? So you're getting you're getting growth, accumulative growth, getting you know things coming in, leaves developing, coming in, and um, I think it's hibernating in this point. Um, but the but the sap is rising, you know, flow rises. It says you know flow rises, so the sap's rising at this point, and then it starts to put out leaves. At this point in its life, then it flowers right here, and then you have this um, what is this differentiating growth. I think and then here you're getting the fruit to kind of develop but it will actually you're probably harvesting fruit i don't know anyway i'm trying to like just on the fly go over this but it's hey what's up george um but but here um coming in and then it goes back into a dormant period so all this is actually explained really you know master cho going over this in my um on my youtube channel you can look it up it's i think it's called um nutrient cycle like basic nutrient cycle class but he's going through, you know, type four, type four, type four, three, three, two, two, three, or three, two, three, you know, and, and so all this relates back to what, you know, his other charts and how all these things fit together of like what kind of growth you're doing where, um, and then, you know, it says the, the requirements of the NPK calcium, you know, in the beginning it needs nitrogen, like from here to here, from basically, um, you know, March to June, it needs high nitrogen high potassium um, or in low phosphorus, low calcium. And then again, he goes, you know, the nitrogen gets lower. Um, your um, 
uh, potassium comes up. Um, what is that? Medium. Your phosphorus goes high, and your calcium becomes uh, medium. And then here, you know, nitrogen is low. You know, in your final harvest, coming into harvest, um, you're going to be low nitrogen, medium, medium, high calcium. So high, your calcium gets high towards the end because you want to transport all those nutrients in your fruit. And then here, I translated all these things of like, what are those solutions and how are those things coming together? But it's hard to read even for me here. Of, of I can't really I'm looking at this and it's blurry and stuff but but I do have these original documents like in a folder somewhere this is just a scan and I guess I didn't scan it at high enough resolution for me to be able to read here um, but this is like you know when you get into nutrient cycle you get into these things that's that I mean that's for pear and apple right um, and then this one here is for a peach so actually a peach has a different stage of according to Master Cho than a pear and an apple right and it's like what's the difference well you got to look and really understand this and then what else does he have here i think this one is rice oh this one's a pepper so if you're going to grow a pepper you know here's here's the nutrient cycle for that and, and things changing so when i talk about nutrient cycle there's like you know there's so much subtlety coming from master cho and this is like measuring the amount of leaves you have when there's two to three leaves you're doing this five to six you're doing this then you got you know six to eight eleven to fifteen like you know like and then the peppers are coming out and like this is the guide for growing peppers right and then what else do we got here this one is a rice crop or a 180 day crop in general right so if you have like a, a taro or a um you know uh, i think a taro is like 270 days but you know 180 day crop here what you're doing um you know got got all these coming out um you know so nutrition cycle changes uh what else we got here it looks, looks like these are just the original korean documents without me tr uh, writing translations all over them and kind of making them more blurry with my translations but these are the original korean documents there and then what is this here yeah it looks like the you know big big scan of that one um and then here's you know all all this uh these look like just the original documents before i wrote on them um and then again again here's like my notes from all this right like i took this was in 2017 the advanced uh training there you know and i took i took my own a bunch of personal notes on this of you know i'm just i basically just wrote down everything master Cho was saying uh as he was saying <laughs> Better than science. Suck it, MFs. <laughs> Master Cho, he, he loves to talk crap. And that was just the first day. This was day two here coming in. You know, I'm scrolling by fast. It kind of blurred on purpose because if you want all this, you know, should probably make it a little bit more. Um, but when he starts talking about the leaves, type two, type three, type four, these are the th different types of leaf growth. And this was a picture he drew where type two leaves are coming out. They kind of got this roundish um uh, shape to them type three leaves get these triangles they come out in the summer and then type four growth is these round leaves that come out in the fall so he's actually looking you know the type two type three type four the types of growth stages these types of things you're doing the leaves actually change shape and if you really tune into farming you'll see that you know the shapes of your leaves and things are changing you really get deep into that to finding all this out so I just kind of show you this as a preview right now. I didn't really want to dive too deep into that. Um, but um, yeah. So anyway, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. So when I'm trying to like explain natural farming in like three hours or like a session or whatever, it's like, man, there's a whole lot to it and more that I've learned, more that I need to go back and review and really rewatch my videos. Because each time I do and watch Master Cho stuff, I get even more out of it, right? it's like an onion it's like more layers more layers peeling it away finding out you know what's what's good what's great what did i miss what am i just like you know making my own errors making um you know and i'm trying to get the most accurate information out there but like master cho there he's the man he knows what's up and he learned this um you know through books through um studying with um you know uh uh you know other people and other things you know so he's um you know it's all it's all coming around of what he's trying to, to
to understand. So, um, so yeah, so a um, little bit, um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, and it's just an evolution. We learn more. You know, Master Cho always says natural farming is kind of unfinished um, going through to, to teach us. Um, but that's actually one of the reasons I'm backing up these hard drives right now, because I actually have all this information out there. Um, and then if I look here, let me go just quickly here to my channel. And I'm... Um, been trying to so so let me just bring this over because this is um you know my channel Ooh, there's me live right now may 7th 22 of you guys watching S share spread subscribe get more folks on to this i don't know why um you know more people tune in see these things actually live going deep into natural farming appreciate you guys because you're learning about it but as i scroll down here it's like you know these complete online courses so there's my certification class super popular um but Natural Farming by Master Cho, and then, you know, Lane Ingham and the Basics by Young Song Cho. But, um, but here, under this basic natural farming course, the complete, complete thing, the uh, lecture that I was talking about is actually this right here. So those documents I was pulling up are right here, <clears throat> excuse me, under this basic nutrient cycle course. So if I open that in a new tab, don't laugh how my tabs are open here, but... But here's Master Cho, oh yeah, doing this, and then all the advertisements I made for it and everything, and getting people uh, pumped on this. But you can learn directly from the man himself here, you know, talking about what we're doing. Kim Chang, rest her soul, bless her peace, and re I hope she's resting in peace. But um, here we are, you know going through i filmed this whole thing and he's talking about it in real time talking about these things so if you don't you know don't just trust me go look for the original source go find these things go look through you know um this is you know first one was an hour 49 then three hours 53 two hours 44 29 minutes three hours 18 two hours 28 you know and part of this i actually even missed part of this um um what you call um, lecture because I actually had you know I was running administration for this and I had to be down there printing out um, those handouts that I showed you and then what was nice about this too is that I got because I was helping the um, you know run the event I got to spend time with Master Cho after hours and when I sit one on one with him he downloads you with way more information and one of these nights he was talking about the 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 age of rocks and how rocks go from black to like red to orange to like almost faded away and he was talking about you know if you're on red dirt you really don't the rocks are already used like the black new rock that's lava that comes out is super rich full of nutrients but then by the time it gets red and orange you're not having the same amount of nutrients come out of your rock and so you know you really need to revitalize with seawater and you know he's just amazing talking to you know learning straight with him you know i mean obviously through a translator but um but, you know, he downloads me with some stuff, which I take notes diligently when I'm doing all that and I have my notebooks and all that. So that's how I learned to try to convey this to you and get this out. Um, but um, and then here, you know, it's it's classic here on the thing. It's like, thank you, Drake. This is truly a contribution to the betterment of mankind. And thanks for that. You know, I'm really trying to get these things out, um, you know, and thanks, Drake, for, you know, without people without them people like me from so far away couldn't participate one day i hope to be there in person you know chich chong <laughs> you know and um nature to me is the cycle of life and you know thanks so some people you know but but again i look at this and it's only like um it's five years ago this was published and there's only 1.6 thousand views on it so um you know it's kind of funny like I put this information out, it's here, it's like you can go learn directly from Master Cho, but very few people take that opportunity uh, to do it. So if you're one of those people that really wants to dive deep, you know, this is, it's free, it's on the YouTube, I mean, it's as free as, um, you know, Google's obviously sucking your soul out of you and stealing all your information, all your data. Um, but that's, that exchange, if you're willing to exchange that, um, you're, you know, you're able to um, get, um, you know, this information and um you know learn directly that way um so do that while it's still um you know 
you know, before CBDCs and they take all this stuff away from you and you're banned from the internet for, you know, censorship or whatever. It's all coming, but, um, but keep, keep things positive, keep on the good things of, you know, tune in, uh, check in these things. My, my channel, I put the direct raw content up there so you can see it. I really try to share that. Um, other things in, that I wanted to get to um, just kind of briefly before I get into um, the Master Cho's presentation is that, again, I just wanted to pull up the peerknf.org, uh, the PeerKNF Foundation. Uh, we've been really working hard this year. Um, we're a small team and we're slow, but we're diligent and we're persistent. And um, so Pure KNF Foundation, we've been doing a lot of good um, behind the scenes. And I was telling someone the other day, it's like microbial growth and in, in spreading natural farming is, is exponential. So in the beginning, it seems like nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. But a lot's happening and it's doubling, it's doubling, it's doubling. And then all of a sudden, we're now starting to get into the exponential point of this. And now it's just growing like crazy. Like, you know, that time period is only a tiny bit and it's just doubling. It's, it's just the curve starting to get steeper. So thanks for your patience. Thanks for your persistent, even though there's only like, you know, a few people tuned in here, which I appreciate you. I'm not saying, but it's like, it's that small. We're still in the first exponential bit of this going. And then the curve is going to get steeper and, it, and people are going to grow. And what does it take? It takes things like can of support here, which is something we offer, which is a question answer platform where um, tons and tons of questions have been answered. You know, obviously I need to answer this one here, um, but one week ago and the goof man has been holding it down here. He's really been so helpful answering all the questions um, and really there. Um, but you know, we offer knfsupport.com. It's linked from pure KNF, but knfsupport.com is a pure KNF project. And then I also wanted to show you guys this, which is something I've been working on. Um, and it's in building a community. So my whole goal is to get people off the Facebook because it's, it's junk, it's trash. Um, things go away and actually offering a full on community where we have groups, where we have these different topics that we can discuss. And this is just kind of wanted to get a little feedback from you guys of, you know, what kind of groups do you want to see? Uh, before I go full bore into this. And then we're also working on how to, um, for a small cost, because I got to avoid the bots. And, and also it makes sense that if you getting value from this, you pay some value to help the foundation actually, because we're, we're going, we're above our budget this year to do projects like this. And so if we can get um, our membership going for the right, uh, right, um, you know, financial flow, then we can really dig deep into these projects and make these happen. But just a little preview of what we got going, like basically here you can see, you know, I'm just, you know, I have an admin account, my, my personal account, and then Sue's. And we're just, you know, as the Peer Canna Foundation, we're just getting this going. But it gives you kind of like a little, um, you know, profile where you can kind of talk about yourself, uh, stream of what you're up to, Simil very similar to Facebook. Um, if you go back to the members, you know, you can see Sue's actually filled out a little bit more about her self here and then your farm information, like where you're farming and then ways to reach each other here. So this will be, um, you know, behind a, a membership thing so that we can kind of get into this, but it'll really give us a way to, you know, connect with each other. And as I've been saying, I've been trying to get the map up and getting this implemented and now gives us this user map here which I got to rename it from user map because, and, and that's actually what I'm working on is the translation and all this, because then we'll be able to see each other on a map and then, you know, click here. We're the only two people in here right now, but you can look, you can see Sue's right here. Click on her. You can find myself here, right? I, I put my PO box. So it put me over there. She put our actual home address, which luckily didn't put it right where we live, um, but it's close enough. Um, but you can then find people around you and then click on them and be like, oh, this person's right near me. What's about them? And find out about them, right? And find out who and what's going on. And then this will help find a, find each other and spread and with the right thing. So I'm looking for a little bit of feedback. If you want to help this, you want to be part of this, um, you know, I got to obviously like right now it's like it's kind of empty and it's hard to like 
you know, it's like you arrive first at the party. It's hard, you, you know, it's like, is anyone else coming? You know, like, but I do want to get this rolling with folks and get it so that we can start to fill this out and then integrate it in with KNF support so that I'm not running two distinct platforms, but that we can bring that into here. We can talk to each other. We have groups. We can be like, you know, and I, I thought, you know, what groups do we need? I was like, climate restoration, number one, right? Um, a global community chat so we can all talk to each other, just like, you know, random chat. Then we can have a learning center so that people can put it in there for the basics. And then basically the advanced topics would be broken out like, you know, livestock or pest and disease management and, um, you know, other things. I was thinking like orchards or, um, you know, veg like market gardening, um, you know, how to apply those. So. This is up, you know, it's at community.peercanf.org. Um, you you will not be able to register right now um, because it's closed and I got to actually get it so that, you know, I actually got to charge you a little bit of money to get into this because then I can eliminate the bots because I just dealt with a huge thing of Russian bots and attacking my other servers and all this. And I really, you know, need that not to happen. So I'm hoping that this can happen and then maybe even have a video section where we can you know and tutorials and whatever you know but um but wanting to do that so this is in progress we're just working on getting the um you know our, our membership together and getting that so we're all good and, and there'll be a calendar too so we can share events coming up because there's a bunch of things happening in the knf community different people offering courses and things and so hoping that this will facilitate more connection more you know mycelial going out more you know help this grow more exponentially right because once we know and we communicate with each other, it gets better that way. So anyway, look forward to that. Um, but, you know, Pure KNF Foundation, you want to help out. Um, they've been helping, you know, um, me, but, you know, it's a nonprofit. You can make a tax deductible donation if you want to see these things happen. And then we'll also be offering membership. So like quid pro quo, you give us something, we give you something back and make all that happen. So. Anyway, I wanted to update you guys on that because you're here and you guys are the, the people that probably are the most interested and want to connect as a community. I love how in the chat you guys are just like, you know, sharing with each other and really like, it's so cool to see this community we've built. A seed exchange, that'd be an interesting idea, you know. Um, so looking forward to that, um, making that happen, working on that. Um, just to let you know there's stuff happening it's it's behind the background and it's you know it's happening um and then um i want to take the last um you know a little bit of this time here um just to um get into this um um and um so there's a question from george here he's asking about his imo3 uh, he says the change hasn't uh, the the smell hasn't changed from bread breaking to forest floor, and he's going into IMO four. Smells a bit of ammonia. Haven't gone over forty five uh, degrees Celsius. Um, just make sure you're turning it. If you're smelling ammonia, um, that's a sign that things are getting anaerobic, and somehow the um, the microbes underneath are um, getting anaerobic. And when they get anaerobic, instead of fermenting and releasing CO two. They actually start to like um, putrefy and release um, nitrogen. So your nitrogen is burning off into the atmosphere. So that means that microbes are being eaten. Like where's the nitrogen coming from? It's actually the low temperature microbes are being eaten by these anaerobic ones that are eating those aerobic microbes, the ones you want, and they're releasing the ammonia. So um, and you've been turning it like eight times a day maybe make the pile a bit thinner i mean i don't i don't know like um you're uh man i don't know because it's you're up in a different climate than me um and you cannot use a blower instead of turning the pile because turning you're taking the outside microbes mixing them to the inside and you're actually increasing diversity so it's not about just inserting air it's actually about turning the pile and actually making an ecosystem it's um you know there's a lot to it more than just um these things but there's a lot of concepts that all fit together but um but you know it's hard to hack these things to to make it that way um so anyway um i don't know if you're turning it eight times a day that seems like that is more than sufficient um so maybe on that i don't know if you included fuel when you initially did it or something or what material you're actually making it from 
but it sounds to me like your material was a little too rich. You might want to go with something that's like a little less um, like food oriented, starch, less carbs. Uh, I don't know, maybe blend some wood chips in it to kind of slow it down. Also throw in a bit of biochar when you're making it. Um, and that will also help to stabilize all these processes. Um, mill run is prescribed. Okay, so I would then then blend in. You, you think you need to increase your carbon in there a little bit. So blend in some um, blend in some wood chips or some biochar to increase the amount of carbon that you have to salvage these piles. And even at this point, you can blend it in. It'll be fine. It'll hopefully slow that process down. Give the microbes some other things. Um, and yeah so um yeah and move in yeah cheryl's saying did you move it to a new spot maybe maybe also doing that the, you know um lots of suggestions i love to see this from the community of people that are have experience sharing more experience because that's what makes a difference um so um yeah so we'll see on all that i, I don't know good good suggestions coming up um so same spot in pure mill run yeah you might want to blend in a bit of wood chips carbon i think you know, same spot you know we'll see um so anyway i did want to i'm going to transition over to this screen and i did want to continue with master cho's presentations here um he's getting into natural farming methodology if you tune in uh, two weeks ago because i didn't do it last week um we talked about um the great teachers so his inspirations and then this week um, this is like the origins of knf part of the presentation we're getting into natural farming methodology so um you know so his one of his main theories is no pesticides so natural farming does not use pesticides at all you know um but you know, pest, so I'm just going to kind of read from the slide here, but pesticides not only kill insects, but they also remain in the soil and in the fruits. So you're going to eat that residual stuff. Um, when absorbed, it can inflict serious lasting harm on our bodies and even our descendants, right? So you're thinking about the seventh generation. It's like, you know, oh, a great perfect fruit today, but I'm killing myself. I'm lowering my sperm count. I'm, you know, like putting you know, chemicals in me that are designed to kill into me, then I'm passing that nutrition onto my children and everything. So it's, um, it's, it's, um, going, you know, into our descendants and everything and natural farming helps the corrupt ecosystem to recover. So if these chemicals are in the ecosystem, the microorganisms help to break them down. Um, and just quickly to answer George's question on the wood chips, how much would I add? I would add in um, uh, about 10% of your pile with wood chips at this point um, to see 10 to 20% somewhere in there. Um, so natural farming and then, um, so the recovered and balanced ecosystem results in less pests and less disease. So actually, if you go and you recover your ecosystem, then you're, the pests and diseases are there to actually treat um, things that are unhealthy. So if you're always, you know, like the pests and disease, they're the janitors, right? So if you clean up the mess ahead of time, you build a healthier ecosystem ahead of time, you won't have as many pests and as many disease. And then he says, fruits from natural farming exhibit natural colors, fragrance, and sometimes insect bite marks as proof of zero pesticides. So having a little pest, it's actually like, you know, when you go to the store and you see a little bit of pest damage, a little bit of things, it's like, it's actually a good sign, right? Uh, getting, getting better things there, um, getting it. So it's like, you don't have these same things. So strengthen your plants. Don't try to kill everything. Cause it, it, you know, you think of this as a seventh generation thing as a clean the planet, you're going to kill everything using these things. So, um, then he talks about no herbicides. Right. So not only no pesticides, no herbicides. And these are products from war that were developed to like kill. And, and actually the main herbicide glyphosate was actually developed as a descaler for a boiler, meaning that basically it takes all the mineral content, solubilizes it and pulls it out. Right. And so that's what it's doing to your plant. Um, so um, so natural farming does not use herbicides. Killing the weeds with herbicides is is not the only solution nor is it wise right 
you know, bare soil, killing everything. It's like you're killing your whole microbiome. You're killing everything, you know, so it's not the wisdom is like there are better techniques. So herbicide is lethal to humans also. So every time you're out there spraying herbicide, are you thinking about what you're getting? You know, I look around here, a lot of, we have a lot of papaya farmers and as they're aging, they're all getting cancers. They're all, um, you know, starting to die from like Alzheimer's and, and um, Parkinson's and stuff. And those, I think, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying this is true, you know, 100% true because I don't want to, um, you know, get in a lawsuit or anything. But it seems to me there's a high correlation between pesticide application and later degeneration of your body. You know, we're also ingesting it through our food, right? Um, so natural farming utilizes weeds rather than killing them. So actually look at the weeds as your allies, putting those out there, um, seeing how they're complementary to what you're growing. And it says we intentionally grow wild grass such as rye and clover from mulching. So those will grow and they don't get <clears throat> tall enough to knock down your plant like in an orchard. For sure, they don't grow up tall enough to knock down. And then in, in other places, you can cut them and chop and drop onto um, more vegetable type things. And my, my throat's a little scratchy here. But um, the grass prevents soil erosion, holds moisture, helps microorganism pr propagate, produces organic fertilizer, improves soil per ventilation, and suppresses pests. That's more than five things. That's six things. ChatGPT can only suggest three. This is six things. It's twice what ChatGPT can give you. Um, we, um, you know, so... All this comes from, you know, like uh, the classic bear field. And then they're wondering why they're in a drought and why, they, you know, the plants are dying and why there's so much insects. And then you got to apply so much herbicide. It's because you killed the home where all the insects could have lived. And you, you, um, you know, like, the, of course, it's going to lead to other problems. So cover cropping, right? He says intentionally putting things that are going to be great and cover cropping with your plants. Um there, it's going to improve all these things and your soil is going to get richer and then you're going to have less pest problems. Maybe in the very beginning you might have more pest problems because there's more habitat, but eventually your soil will get richer. And it's just that balance. Can you wait it out? Can you get to that level? And then also when I mow, I don't mow 100% of my farm. I try to mow every other row and or now I graze with my cows, so it's way better. Um, it's actually a much better system to just use hoofers instead of um, woofers. Right? Um, but to, to graze, uh, you know, and to mow every other side because I leave half the grass tall. Because if I mowed it all 100%, now the bugs have no place to go. They all got to go into my crops, right? But if I mow half, they'll just move over to where the grass is tall. Then I mow the other half, you know, and alternate it. So I keep one part kind of tall. And this, again, is the natural. I don't have to use herbicides because they'll move into the grass. I'm creating more habitat, more ecosystem. So, again, his next slide is no tilling. Right? This sounds like way less labor because I don't have to spray pesticides. I don't have to spray herbicides. Now I don't have to till. Right? How much of your um, investment on your farm is in your machinery for tillage? Right? And so natural farming prov promotes no mechanical tillage of the land. How I do, I do, however, recommend you shape your beds first. You build your your key line design first, then stop tilling. Right? Instead of using tilling machines, we use earthworms microorganisms and small animals to nurture the soil so those will all grow through and do everything and and actually till your land much better than you can at much more depth and the byproduct of those are manures and um worm castings that will actually um in enhance the tilt of the soil instead of tilling it where you destroy everything and destroy all your fungus and set yourself back years um so the machine plows eight inches at best, whereas the earthworms can dig 13 to 23 feet under the ground. And the excretions of the earthworms produce the best nutrient rich soil, which is exactly what I just said. And the next slide says no chemical fertilizer here. Um, natural farming does not use chemical fertilizers, right? So um, it's all it's all sweet. It's all um, sugar based or, um, you know, and you can eat all this stuff. Um, and I'm a little bit over time. I'm going to continue out, finish, finish out this little bit here um, going. But natural farming does not use chemical fertilizers. 
nitrogen, phosphoric acid, potassium, calcium, and all other elements that would be commonly given in the form of chemical fertilizer are substituted with natural farming materials, right? And we can make the all these things, the, the, the nitrogen is the can of fuel, the fish aminos, phosphoric acid is in the, um, the structure, the dissolved bones, charred dissolved bones. Uh, potassium is in your um, fermented fruit juice, fermented plant juices, but also um, fermented flower juices all in there. They have tons of potassium in those. Calcium, we have the KNF reproduction, where it's dissolved eggshells or dissolved coral that, that's been toasted to get out the inorganic material, dissolved in vinegar. So all those things we get, and plus more, um, without having to have the nasty fertilizer plants that are out there that create so much pollution and the mining and the, the, the um, you know, energy that goes into making chemical fertilizer is just insane. Um, and so, you know, the Haber-Bosch process, you know, uses most natural gas in the world to like turn it into fertilizer, right? You don't need that. Um, so the fish aminos, yeah, exactly. Fish aminos provide nitrogen, eggshells give calcium, animal bones are a source of phosphoric acid, exactly what I just said. And our natural farming materials are not only cheap, but they're highly effective, right? So it costs you next, almost next to nothing to do it this way. Your main investment is a little bit of time, but you know, time is money. And if that money you're saving is more time for you, then now, you know, they're there and they're even better. They're more organic, they're more absorbable. So you don't need the chemicals that, that only last like two weeks and then harden into rock minerals. You can actually put these organic substances that are absorbed directly into the plant. Thank you for the super chat. Yes, Don Mason, thank you. It's awesome. So um, maybe that's the overtime a little bit. So, um, so then he goes into livestock barns with no pollution. There's no pollution from a livestock farming barns. And I can tell you the only runoff I get is beneficial runoff. My, my livestock pen actually spills over and it's more fertile around it. It's like, whoops, beneficial runoff. Um, livestocks and pens do not discharge any wastewater because I don't have to wash the floor. I don't have to clean up after the chickens or the pigs. They just, it's, it, it's digested right there. I don't, my water bill is zero besides what they drink. To, to feed themselves up there um so when livestock feces fall um when when feces from livestock fall on the floor it is quickly decomposed by powerful microorganism activities so that's why there's no smell it's digested before the smell can happen and it's and it actually turns those into proteinaceous things the animals will actually get food source from their waste as it's been fermented by these microorganisms and so concrete is not used on the barn floor. Uh, so again, huge labor or huge cost savings when you're building your facility. You don't need to put concrete down. You just dig a hole and put the put, build the floor in there. And the floor is in direct contact with the soil, which teems with microorganisms. So you're actually exchanging microbes out there into into there. Um, the, the piglets are good, by the way. I was I was going to give you a piglet update. So stay tuned till the end, and I'll give you a little piglet update. Um, and so the floor consists of a mixture of rice straw, sawdust, fresh soil. Um, I end up using logs and um, wood chips. So logs underneath the wood chips because I don't have um, rice straw or sawdust. And I do add a little bit of soil in there. Um, and so there's no need to clean or remove the animal waste and feces from the natural farming barns even after many years of use. And I can testify to that. My barn is uh, was created in 2012. So it's just getting to 11 years of um, usage and it's still, um, you know, I haven't even had to clean it or remove any waste in 11 years from pigs, huge pigs in there. Um, and it does not pile up. It's right. They actually decompose with very little smell. So actually one of the main issues is that instead of piling up and getting more and more waste, it's actually composting and breaking down and turning back into the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, which then off gas into the air through, through proper fermentation. And so through that carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen have no smell. And so my barn doesn't smell as it's decomposing and breaking down. It's not turning into highly nitrogenous, um, um, off gassing, which is what smells. Um, and so natural farming resources such as sunlight, efficient air circulation and microorganisms are utilized to maintain the, the floor dry and fluffy totally. 
Um, and it's a common sight to see natural farming barns or pens right next to residential buildings. Mine's, however, way over there because of noise for the chickens that I don't want to annoy my other neighbors over here with chickens crowing, which I do keep a few roosters. I keep one rooster per 12 hens. So, um, but, and, but I could live right in there and I do, I go up there all the time and it's like, it's really nice. So, um, so again, and then also in the barns, no artificial heating. So even if you're in, um, you know, Korea where it gets really cold and really hot and in America where it, where it snows all the time, um, you know, all the time, all winter, right. Or anywhere you have big seasons, except I'm in the tropics. So I don't really have that issue, but I don't have to heat or cool the building because, um, and it says here, natural, uh, instead of using fossil fuel or electricity to provide heating, we help the livestock to develop the natural resistance against cold. Okay. So also the floor heats up itself and keeps them warm, but natural farming chickens grow short, tough, and dense hair, whereas ordinary chickens have long, soft, and sparse hair. Um, so I haven't noticed that with my chickens. I'm in the tropics, but I'm sure it's the case because I've seen chickens in Korea and no artificial heating in there. In cold regions, the heat coming from fermentation of the compost is utilized to maintain a comfortable temperature level in the barn. So again, the floor is composting, is heating, is fermenting. It's about 104 degrees down there if I dig down. And that is keeping the, um, the animals very comfortable. Uh, that heat also helps then suck out the air at the top and keep circulation and bring cool air in for me where it's actually hotter than they would like but it stays really nice and cool in my barn um, and then again the natural farming the next slide is the natural farming feed is made locally by farmers natural farming feed um, chickens are fed with whole brown rice grains and bamboo leaves immediately after hatching this toughens up their immune or their uh, intestines and tough fiber rich feed strengthens their intestines exactly what i said animals raised by natural farming methodology are healthy strong and have little disease because they're already tough you know they're not like these weakling things we're trying to get we toughen them up you know give them a hard knock childhood and then they get really nice um and then nutrient cycle theory which i covered a lot in this office hour um, raises crops and livestock based on the nutritive cycle theory which is um it is a theory that enables us to identify the changing growth stages in plants and animals. And if you saw that, I was talking about the peach is different than the pear is different than the pepper. All these things, um, you know, you got to understand each one. And then natural farming methodology is very elaborate and complicated and precise method that denies the spray and forget kind of approach. Right? I was talking about how you got to be a better master at this to understand how those guides are just guide or those formulas are. are prescriptions are just guidelines but you can't just like mix something and spray and forget you actually got to be an active observer of it and it says natural farming emphasizes the right use of the right material at the right stage in the right quantity and so all those things you got to tune yourself in to be that person and then it will work for you beyond your wildest dreams you will see just amazing returns so I encourage you, you know, tune in, learn, watch those original videos, make yourself the best natural farmer you can, but the best is just to go out and observe, see, tune in, spend time in your, your farm, your garden, and um, really learn this deeply. So I think that's what I got for today. The next time we'll be going over natural farming products. Um, but the last little bit, as promised, I'm going to go through and do a uh, little pigs that's why well, actually if you watch the beginning of this office hours a bit late starting because i was actually trying to bring this onto my um onto my computer instead of just my phone but little pig update for you guys i'll turn this sideways so you can see here um but them pigs getting huge um will it focus on that maybe i know you guys can see it um but here's the little pigs um, doing their things. They're getting huge. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll actually update a YouTube video, but you know they're they're uh, they're doing really well. I love them. They're they're really differentiating out to their different things. And then I've also made their own separate little pig pen where they can run through this little tunnel into their own place. So now they're eating on their own side they're now starting to eat solid good food they love the papayas um and um i'm trying to get them and ease up their um ease up the pressure on mom 
so that um you know now they're starting to nurse pretty hard on mom and she she now they're old enough that now when she used to be really nice and care for them and like you know be real concerned if they would squeal now if they start eating her food she'll just flip them in the air and like be like that's my food so that's why i feed them separately in their own pen um but they're, they're eating banana stock they're eating um you know um all all their big foods so they're trying to get um you know but they are still nursing and i oh man look at the gg that's my my little girl there she's so awesome um but they've been they've been doing well um and so yeah giving them their own feed get and and we've also been feeding cow floss to um short ribs their mom and it's keeping her milk really strong so even though it's you know they're they're what uh th 37 days old um they're really doing well and i'm gonna keep, i'm gonna i'm gonna wean them about 45 days so they'll they'll be there um so but anyway i love them they're they're great i it's just it's so cute after i cut their balls off they're a little more skeptical of me but they still come over for pets and we're, we're rebuilding that relationship you know <laughs> it's wild um and um sadly I, I i actually i did have one die um because of the botched um castration job that i did it's the first time i was ever castrating a pig and that one that i castrated first um he got a uti and ended up passing away and i just i anyway i learned a lot and i'll probably never kill another pig from that way again but um shoot man it's 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 a hard learning curve to be a good farmer and to know and it's my first time doing it by myself usually my friend who's a um, doctor for the um, army would come over but he's um you know he's, he's now as a family and he was busy and shit so i was like i'll do it myself i know how to do this and it was just uh anyway i learned a lot um Susanna and i learned a lot and i don't think i'll ever mess up again but it's so uh, so hard to lose one of your animals i i really loved him but i turned him into good compost i put him on my miracle berry um and um you know but oh man the tragedy we tried to nurse him back to health for like three days and um you know there's, there's only so much you can do with a pig of calling a vet to like spend a bunch of money on an animal it's only worth like 125 bucks and so um you know the tragedy of life of man i'm trying to be a better farmer so but anyway the, the other the other um seven of them doing kicking butt um really doing well i i you know um so anyway, i had to share that with you guys but um but oh and then uh i i do i um i was able to f buy them some ice cream and i fed them some ice cream and they loved it so check that video out. i'll probably upload that after this and um check that out but i want to thank you guys for tuning in everyone from around the world stone mason for the super chats supporting um pure KNF foundation making these things great um trying to show up consistently sorry i missed last week but you know just traveling i gotta actually um, give myself time and forgiveness and all that stuff but um love you guys thanks thanks for tuning in um looking forward to seeing you next week should be here happy may happy spring happy everything and if i missed anything send me an email drake at purekf.org let me know how i can be better to help you guys do our things make it better for everyone and really appreciate you um yeah truly truly i do thank you and aloha and see you next week aloha bye now